Anyway, so me and my brother, we decided a long time ago that there's gonna be lots of pussy at the Eurovision Song Contest. We came to this conclusion because lots of people go there from all around the world. It's pop music, it's bullshit. We thought there'd be some hoes. So we thought, fuck it. One of these days we have to go to Eurovision. Last year it was in Kiev, Ukraine. Ukraine is some of the hottest girls in the world. So we thought, fuck it. We're gonna go to Eurovision. This is the year to do it. We're gonna go to Kiev. We decided this about two days before Eurovision. All the flights into Kiev were completely booked. It was extremely difficult to get into the country. So we thought, how the fuck are we gonna do this? Right now we're in Bucharest, Romania. This is my house. We look at a map. We're about six hours from the Moldovan borders. We thought, fuck it. We're gonna drive. We jumped in the car, started driving, got six hours to the border of Moldova, and they wouldn't let us through the border because we didn't know at the time. We need to have the original paperwork to go into Moldova because all the cars in Europe that are stolen end up in Moldova, so they're very strict at the borders unless you bribe them, which I tried to do and they wouldn't accept because they didn't know me. You need to have the original document. We can't, there's no like way we can, is there a fine or a, we pay a fine or a penalty? Anything we can do? It's not about the penalty. Or it's about the car, car that not. will not leave the country. You have to have the original paperwork. We only had photocopies of our paperwork. We don't keep the original paperwork in the car. So they wouldn't let us through. So we parked our car at a train station in a town called Yash on the border of Romania. We then went up to a taxi, said, can you take us to Chisinau, which is the capital of the neighboring country, Moldova. So effectively being in France and saying, can you take me to Berlin, the capital of Germany. It's a long taxi drive. Finally found a guy who would do it. 130. Euro. Euro. For more money than we should have paid. He took us to Chisinau. When we were in Chisinau, we had to negotiate a way to Kiev. We found an overnight train and we got there. Problem is on that overnight train, I nearly got robbed. That train is completely mafia run. That train is, you can bribe your way in and out. You don't have to show a passport. You don't have to go through customs. So all the Russian mafia who travel in and out of Romania and Moldova come in and out by train. They do not go by plane. So that's a mafia run train. And that was a very difficult and scary experience. Up until this point, all of this is recorded and part of the Hateful Tate series, which we're gonna put a link to. So feel free to watch it and find the details of me nearly getting robbed. Uh, Kishinau, the train, all that shit. So anyway, the web series ends, Eurovision's over, me and my brother in Ukraine, we gotta get out. So we're like, how the fuck do we get out? All the planes are booked for another week. We don't wanna stay in Ukraine for another week. We don't wanna take the train again because of what happened the first time. So we're like, well, you can't fly, can't take a train, can't take a boat. The only way is to drive. We gotta get, we gotta drive out here somehow. So we're going from taxi driver to taxi driver to taxi driver saying, can you drive us to Romania? And it turns out that Ukrainians at the time, which is now changed, I believe, needed a visa to get into Romania. So it was very difficult to find a taxi driver with a visa who was prepared to do a fucking 18 hour drive at a whim. So we're sitting around Ukraine for 12 hours. Every taxi driver, I'm ordering Ubers. I'm calling everyone up saying, look, I need to get to Romania. I'll pay, a th I, I mean, it's, I was offering five, six times the market rate. Like I was saying, look, I'm gonna give you two grand. Remember, these people make 250, $300 a month. I was offering them 2,000 US dollars for one drive. It's like, get me to fucking Romania. I've got shit to do. I've got to get out of this country. Eventually, a guy, we meet a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. He says, I have a guy who has a visa to go into Romania and he's a very good driver. He's an ex rally driver and he's gonna drive you. And we're like, well, thank fuck, let's go. So anyway, me and my brother, he said, meet us here at this time. So 11 o'clock at night, me and my brother are standing on a street corner waiting for fucking Mr. No Name to turn up in the middle of Kiev, Ukraine. It's a dangerous city. We're standing there, combat mode, obviously, chilling. The guy turns up. Now, I expected like ex-rally driver, some kind of super G to turn up. Some little fucking, some loser turns up. Some dude. Must have been about fucking 17. Hi. I'm like, hi, who are you? He goes, oh, I'm your driver. I thought you were a rally driver. He goes, I was a rally driver. Like, when? When you were 12? Like, what the fuck? Since when did you drive when you were 12? Like, whatever. You got a visa? He goes, yeah, I got a visa. We're like, okay, we trust you. So anyway, Mr. 12-year-old decides to drive us. Tristan goes, Tristan's nervous in cars. My brother's been in four car accidents, none of which he's been driving. He's always been the passenger in cars when cars have been wrecked. Car accidents people have died in. Like, big car accidents. But my brother being a Tate doesn't die easy. So he's very nervous in cars. He goes, I'm fucking, I'm a bit nervous. It's an 18-hour car drive. We've got a fucking 12-year-old driving us. There's no street lights in Ukraine. Ukraine doesn't even have 3G on the mobile phone. You have to have Wi-Fi. You, even if you have a Ukrainian SIM, you can't check Facebook, Twitter, nothing. Ukraine is, is much poorer than Romania. I didn't expect that. Romania is a poor country. Ukraine's a fucking poor country. It's a war zone. It's a fucking war. Anyway. So there's no street lights. The roads are bad. Tristan's a bit nervous. He goes, you know what? Oh, this is going to be a long ass drive. Let's get a bottle of vodka. I was like, all right, cool. So we go into the store. I remember this because of how cheap it was. We've got two Snickers bars, a bottle, one liter of vodka, two uh, cartons of cherry juice, and a pack of peanuts for two euros, including the vodka. Including a liter of vodka, two euros. Fucking crazy cheap. So we buy the vodka anyways. We get in the car. We're sitting in the back of the car drinking vodka. We're driving down these roads. Pitch black. Can't see shit. We don't know where we are. 
Our 3G isn't loading on our phones, so we can't see where we are. We're just sitting in the back drinking vodka, talking shit. Mr. Rally Driver is telling us about his imaginary rally career. Motherfucker didn't even finish high school. He ain't been rallying for nobody. So we're driving, 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 driving. All of a sudden, me and Tristan, we're, this is about six hours in. Liter of vodka's gone. So between me and T, we've had half a liter each or whatever. We're a little bit drunk. We're chilling. I see someone out the side of the car. Blacked out. Head to toe black. I said, Tristan, you see that? But it's black out anyway. He's like, what's that? I said, who the fuck is this? We're driving down this bumpy road. Tristan's looking out the window and there's another dude. Blacked. I mean, black balaclava, black ski mask, black jumpsuit, black head to toe. I was like, what the fuck? At this point, me and him are drunk. It's two o'clock in the morning. We're on the border of Ukraine. We have no idea where. We're staring at our windows and we start seeing all these guys dressed in complete fucking black. And Tristan's like, okay. So we say to the rally driver, where are we? He goes, oh, uh, Ukraine. We're like, where in Ukraine? Now, I had a friend who once got robbed in Ukraine. He got into the back of a taxi and the taxi driver was driving. The taxi driver stopped. Two guys got in each side of him while he was in the back, both with knives, put the knives to him and robbed him. So I thought, okay, so we're about to get fucking robbed. So I said to the rally driver, I said, my friend, you better fucking hope I get home. He's like, what? I said, you better fucking hope I get home alive. I'm not the kind of guy you want to fuck with. Even if you kill me, you better hope I get home alive. So I start threatening the taxi driver. I'm making it clear. I ain't dying easy. If I die, I'm taking you with me, you fucking loser. I thought he was about to set me up. Anyway, all of a sudden, car stops. Get out of the car, get out of the car. You hear all these people getting out of the car. Me and Tristan look at each other like, for fuck's sake. Like, we should have known better. This is Ukraine. Shit's about to go down. So we get out of the car. The people who are dressed head to toe in black, turns out, are Russian soldiers. All Russian soldiers. Now, I'm going to give you all a quick geography lesson, because I didn't know any of this geography up until this event, which I researched post so here's the geography lesson. When the USSR fell in the early 1990s, Moldova was being established as a country. Uh, Moldo There's part of Moldova that wanted to remain pro-Russian. Moldova's like half Romania, half Russia. Half the people speak Romanian, half the people speak Russian. It was all part of the USSR, meaning it spoke Russian. When the USSR fell, the Romanians gained influence, and all the Russian population were afraid that when the country officially changes to a Romanian-speaking government, they're going to steal all the money, which is exactly what they did, because it's a corrupt country. So the Russians wanted to remain part of Russia, so a civil war kicked off. And to this day, even though this war was in 1992, there's an area of Moldova called Transnistria, which wants to be part of Russia, which isn't part of Russia. Like a Crimea, breakaway micronations, about 20 or 30 kilometers in length. Tiny little dot on the map, which I'd never fucking heard of up until this point. So me and my brother got out of the car, Russian soldiers from head to toe, blacked out. And not just soldiers, not like you imagine a soldier with like a green thing on and a gun. Special forces blacked out. And the reason they were there is because all the Crimea war shit was just going down at this time. The Crimea Peninsula and all this crap. And in fact, I read it when I was researching posts that the Euro European Union was concerned that the next place Russia would annex would be Transnistria because they had such a pro-Russian mindset. So the Russian government has kept a military presence there since 1992, and it was fucking loaded with, with Russian soldiers. We just got the car with our hands up. They got guns pointed at us. We're like, yeah, well, who the fuck are you? Like, this is more than just a routine robbery. They even had our Mr. fucking rally driver at gunpoint. So we're all at gunpoint. They take us, arrest us, march us, sit us down in this room. And they're like, who? Firstly, they start talking to us in Russian. It's like, my friend, we don't speak Russian. It was a good 10 minute conversation with them yelling at us in Russian and us saying we don't speak Russian until they finally agreed to find someone who spoke English. I don't think they even believed we didn't speak Russian. I think they were sure we spoke Russian before they finally conceded. Left the room, these two big fucking guys, and got some other fucking huge dude to come and sit down with his broken ass English. And he said, what are you doing here? I said, what am I doing where? I'm trying to go back to Romania. So where did you come from? I said, the Eurovision Song Contest. So where the fuck else? Now, I probably, a lot of times people have looked at me like I'm a dickhead in my life. But the biggest, the most important event in my life, or the time I was looked at like the biggest dickhead ever, was this Russian soldier looking at me and my brother, three o'clock in the morning in the middle of a fucking micronation war zone. And I said, I'd been there. I'm there because of the Eurovision Song Contest. He looked at me, he's like, this guy's either the biggest idiot I've ever met or a brave motherfucker. Anyway, by completely terrible coincidence, my brother and I were wearing black. We had black t-shirts on. I had black jeans. He had black jogging bottoms on. He said, why are you dressed in black? I said, I don't know, man. We just got a taxi from Ukraine. We're trying to go back to Romania. He goes, you're impersonating soldiers. It's three o'clock in the morning. You're pretending you come from Eurovision. You're dressed in black. What are you doing here? So they accused us of being American spies. We're like, we're not spies. We just want to go back to Romania. So we're sitting there in the interview room. They come in. Now, let me tell you one thing that did actually cross my mind, because I'm a combatant individual. That's what I do. That's what I did for a living. So it always crosses my mind to fight. It always crosses my mind thinking, okay, this situation's pretty bad. Can I fight my way out of this? There's two guys in the room with me, both armed. They're both big guys, but I could probably take them hand-to-hand because -hand it's close combat. 
But once I get out, there's fucking like 30 guys. They had attack dogs, Rottweilers, the whole fucking lot. So there's no way I can fight my way out of this. All I can do is try and like go along with the fucking process. They bring our suitcases out the car. They pour all our shit on the floor. The dogs start going through our suitcases. These guys start ruffling through our stuff. They search me and Tristan. They take, uh, we had to take our t-shirt off, take our jeans off. We're standing there in our fucking underwear, handcuffed in a fucking little booth. I'm going to try and Google and find a picture of the exact spot so you can see it. A little booth in Transnistria being accused of being American spies. We have American and British passports at 3 o'clock in the morning. We're in a Micronation breakaway. I was desperate to get on my phone. The reason for this is I just actually met Donald Trump Jr. about a month or a month and a half before this. So I have him on WhatsApp. He's my boy. And I've got two or three very important Romanian politicians, high level, like Secretary of State, etc. on WhatsApp. So I thought, if I can just get to my WhatsApp and just send some messages. The, the Russian, they're going to want to kill me. I mean, they're going to keep me for a while. This might go on a few weeks. Let me just get on WhatsApp and speak to some important people and try and get the fuck out of here. So I was saying, look, guys, just give me my phone. I've got a guy in Romania who can speak Romanian and Russian, and you can talk to him, and he'll explain to you that I'm not a spy. I'm just a fucking idiot who went to a shitty song contest and got in the wrong taxi. My taxi driver, Mr. Moron, decided to drive through a fucking war zone. I didn't know. I didn't know this was still technically at war. I had no fucking idea. I look at the rally guy who was kept separate to me and T. But I kept looking out the window, and the rally guy was still out on the gravel road. So I should have known not to trust a 12-year-old. He's standing outside with a gun pointed at his head, fucking wet in his pants. Me and Tristan are sitting there, arrested in our underwear, handcuffed, saying, look, we're not spies, we're not spies. Why are you dressed like soldiers? We're not spies. Anyway, I sat and said to the guy, I said, look, let me get my phone. I'll make some phone calls. This will go away. He says, you're not going to touch your phone for a very long time. I said, my friend. He said, don't call me your friend. I said, fine. I'm not a spy. I'm an idiot. Just take the money that's in my bag and let me go. And this is what I love about corrupt countries. He didn't say yes or no. He spoke to turn to his friend and said something in Russian. Da, 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 da. They spoke in Russian for a few seconds and I can guess what he said. He said, count how much money's in his bag. They went in my bag and they started going through my bag looking for money. And they went through it and they found about 7,000 American dollars. And they sat there and he goes, I never, instantly. There was no pretending that they weren't gonna do it. They found the 7,000. It was actually quite nice of them because they could have just took it and kept me, to be fair. But I guess, you know, they were men of honor. He goes, okay. Here's the deal. I never want to see you again. I was like, trust me, my friend, I guarantee you're never gonna see me again. They took the 7,000, they let us put our clothes back on, they load us back in the taxi with the dork, and they escorted us out with one of those fucking Humvee trucks with guns pointing us the entire time straight out to that fucking Tiraspol or wherever we were. So what's the moral of this story? The moral of this story is quite, there's quite a few morals. One, don't take the train from Kishinev to Kiev if you wanna live. Two, don't take taxis from Kiev to anywhere if you wanna live. Don't go to war zone. Stay out of that part of the world. This is a part of the world that no one goes to. I live in a part of the world that basically no one goes to. And then I go a little bit further to the area where literally nobody goes. No one speaks English. There's no big Americans there. I live here because I make money here. But really, it's a crazy part of the world. The reason I'm telling this story is because me and my brother and I are due to go back there in two days. We tried to avoid going. But a friend of ours invited us. He said, look, we got some work there. We got some business there. You're going to make some money. On top of that, there's a mini skirt competition. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to go to a miniskirt competition in a war zone? Like, what the fuck? Like, there's a whole bunch of beautiful ass women who can't escape, and they like miniskirt competitions. It's a crazy place. No one goes there. Nobody goes here. I've been, I know I've given all of you a geography lesson. None of you have heard of this place, for sure. And now you're all on Google, like, what the fuck? So anyway, I'm going there in two days' time. Hopefully, I don't run into my friend, the border guard. This time, I've actually got a visa. I've been, I've seen my boys in Romania. I've got a high-level visa, Romanian visa, saying, look, he's a diplomat, he's allowed to come, blah, blah, blah. So hopefully, they'll let me in and out with ease.